Welcome students to Chapter 14's coverage of Chemical Kinetics. Today I'll be your host, as I usually am on this channel, for the purpose of teaching you Chemical Kinetics. Before we get started though, I'd like to show you a hilarious chemistry cat from quickmeme.com. In this one he says, The name's Bond. Ionic Bond. Taken, not shared. <laughs> oh dang, I love that one. Okay, after today's lecture, which covers sections one through three of chapter 14, you guys should be able to do the following. First, write relative reaction rates and perform calculations with them. Second, determine reactions rate laws and identify their reaction orders. And third, use experimental rate data to determine reaction orders and reaction rate constants. That's the lineup, let's get started. Chemical kinetics really is the study of the speed with which chemical reactions occur. For example, promoting an electron from one orbital energy level to another takes 10 to the negative 15 seconds. Detonating a bunch of dynamite takes one second for that reaction to occur. Uh, slowly decaying this barge takes 10 to the ninth seconds or 30 years. And the formation of this arch in southern Utah takes 10 to the 15 uh, seconds or 30 million years. Reaction rates can be affected by the physical state of reactants, the reactants concentrations, the reactions temperatures, and the presence of catalysts. We'll talk more about that later on. So in effect, this chapter, Chemical Kinetics, is all about studying reaction rates or speeds. That's what kinetics is. Reaction speeds are, simply put, a measure of how quickly they proceed over time. Makes sense, right? Well, the speed of a chemical reaction is usually reported as its change in concentration or molarity, which we talked about in an earlier lecture, over time. That is, as molarity per second. Let's take, for instance, this hypothetical example shown here. Now, this represents the conversion of A, which are reactants or red spheres, to B, which are products or blue spheres, in the reaction A converting to B. At the beginning of the reaction, the concentration of A, written as A in cute little brackets, is one mole per liter, or one molar. After 20 seconds, it falls to 0.54 molar, while B's concentration has risen to 0.46 molar. By 40 seconds, the concentration of A is 0.3 molar, and the concentration of B is 0.7 molar. We can express the reaction's rate here, then, either as a rate of appearance of B or as a rate of disappearance of A, as indicated here. The average rate of appearance of B, then, would equal the change in the concentration or molarity of B over time, which we could re-express as delta concentration of B over delta T. Similarly, we could say that the average rate of disappearance of A is the change in the concentration of A over time, or negative delta concentration of A over delta T. Does that make sense? I hope so. If not, you're welcome to pause the video and look at this until you're able to kind of digest it. Now, the delta A term is, of course, negative because in this reaction, delta A is a reactant that is disappearing as time moves forward because it converts into B. Now, for this example, we could determine the average rate as being, then, the change in the concentration of A over time equaling 0.54 molar, that's the concentration of uh, A at 20 seconds, minus 1 molar, which was the concentration of A at 0 seconds. And we would divide all of that by 20 seconds minus 0 seconds. Hopefully that makes sense. You throw that all into your calculator, you get an answer of 2.3 times 10 to the negative 2 molars per second. These equations are called relative reaction rate equations. So let's now consider the following reaction, where this molecule over here, which is called butyl chloride, reacts with water to form butanol, or butyl alcohol, and HCl acid. If we prepare a 0.1 molar solution of butyl chloride and measure its concentration at various times, we can produce the following graph. You should notice, looking at this graph, that the rate of the reaction decreases as the reaction proceeds forward. In other words, right here at the very beginning, we have a starting concentration of 0.1 molar butyl chloride. The rate of the reaction is the rate at which that butyl chloride disappears over time. Time is on the x-axis in seconds, and the concentration of butyl chloride is on the y-axis in molars. You can notice once again that the rate, or the slope, of this line is decreasing over time as the reaction proceeds. As you might imagine, this is common because as the reaction proceeds, the amount of reactants decreases, thereby allowing fewer and fewer reactants to 
convert into products over time. Does that make sense? I hope so. I'm bewildered already. So looking at this graph, we could calculate the average rate over the entire reaction, which would be the slope between the starting and ending points, the starting point up here at the very, very top, and the ending point all the way down here. Or if we wanted to, we could calculate the instantaneous rate at any given moment. That would be done by just calculating the slope at any specific moment between two given points. Now, just in case you've forgotten from algebra, the slope of a line is calculated by using the equation delta y over delta x. There is a better way, of course, to calculate the slope, but that involves calculus, which is not a prerequisite for this course, so I won't make you do it. So that brings us to a beautiful lecture exercise. I want you to use this figure to calculate the instantaneous rate of the disappearance of butyl chloride at t equals 0. That is, the initial rate. I'm not going to answer this question for you, but we'll let you instead answer it on your own. You feel comfortable? Good. Let's go on. When we discussed the reaction A converting to B just a few slides ago, we noticed that the rate of disappearance of A was equal to the rate of appearance of B. This is because there was a one-to-one -one ratio of A to B in the chemical equation. So that begs the question, what happens when there isn't a one-to-one -one relationship? Such as in this example, where I have two moles of hydroiodic acid converting into one mole of hydrogen gas and one mole of iodine gas. How do we calculate the rate of conversion in that type of scenario? Here's how. In this scenario, the overall relative reaction rate equation is negative 1 over 2 times delta concentration of HI over delta T equals delta H2 concentration over delta T, which equals delta I2 concentration over delta T. In other words, the stoichiometric coefficient 2 that was in front of the HI in the balanced chemical equation now goes in a denominator multiplied through by delta concentration over delta T. Hopefully that makes sense. So in general then, for a reaction shown here, the relative reaction rate equation is given by negative 1 over the coefficient A multiplied by delta concentration of A over delta T, which equals negative 1 over the coefficient B times delta concentration of, over delta T. These are the reactants which are disappearing over the course of this reaction, which is why they have a negative sign in front of them. But then for the products, all these rates happen to be equal to the appearance of products. So the products, analogous terms, don't have negative signs in front of them. They are 1 over their respective coefficients multiplied by their individual delta concentrations over delta t. <sighs> OK, I realize this is all a little bit overwhelming. But for you, my students who actually take this class from me, I will give you this equation on the front page of the exam. So this brings us to a problem. At elevated temperatures, dinitrogen pentoxide decomposes to nitrogen dioxide and oxygen according to this equation. When the rate of formation of O2 is 2.2 times 10 to the negative 4 molars per second, the rate of decomposition of N2O2 is what? You're welcome to pause the video here, attempt to do it on your own. If you'd like to see me do it, I'll post a link here to a separate video in which I do. Here's another problem. Which of the following is not a valid expression for the rate of the reaction below? Once again, I'll post a link here to a separate video in which I answer this question, which you're welcome to watch if you'd like. That takes us to the end of this lecture video. Please stay tuned for the next one, which I'll continue teaching you about reaction rate laws and chemical kinetics. Until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.